thanks very much, Mark, for the invitation. I'm very, very uh, pleased. Uh, yeah, my name is my name is Joao. I'm so I finished my PhD with Ashley in Bristol. So today I'm going to talk about my latest work with Ashley on the Boolean hidden matching problem, uh, a generalization actually. Uh, you can check the the archive version if you want. So well, without further ado, let's start. So uh, a general overview on the on the talk is I'm going to give a very simple introduction on the communication complexity field. Then I'm gonna explain the, what the Boolean hidden matching problem is. And after that, I'm gonna uh, define our generalization. Uh, and then give upper bounds and lower bounds, which are our like main results, and then move to conclusions. Okay, so what is communication complexity? So communication complexity is in this, uh, it deals with the problem that normally we have two uh, parties, normally Alice and Bob, and each holds some information, like, which is normally modeled as a bit string. So Alice holds some uh, bit string X and Bob holds some bit string Y. And they want to compute a joint function or relation of the uh, both uh, bit strings X and Y. But of course, Alice doesn't know Bob's string Y and vice versa. So in order to solve this problem, they have to communicate among themselves. So Alice have to send some message to Bob. Bob, uh, with this message, will message back Alice and so on until they can figure out, they have uh, enough information to figure out what the, the function of the, their inputs is. And the main idea of the field is they want, we want to measure uh, the minimum amount of exchange information that is needed to solve the problem. Of course, Alice could only could send the whole, her whole bit string to Bob's and like with n bits or uh, qubits, and the problem will be solved. But this is, this is boring. In some instances, we can do much better. And so that's what the, the main field is about, is worried about. Uh, can, we do, can we do much better than just send the whole uh, string to Bob and, and, and we're done? And in, in, in the quantum setting, we are, we're interested in finding separations between classical and quantum. So if we, if we use qubits to send information to Bob, we might do much better than classically. And that's what we wanna find. We wanna find basically exponential separations between both. Uh, in this talk, I'll be looking uh, to the one way, at the one way, one way model where Alice can only communicate to Bob, is only allowed to communicate to Bob, but not vice versa. So the, there are many interesting models, like there's the two way model where both can communicate, there's the one way model, and there are others. The problems I'm, I'm gonna talk about is, was like handcraft for this uh, model, one way model. So I'm gonna focus on it alone. Good, so it was very, very simplistic, very uh, uh, broad uh, uh, view on the field. So I'm gonna move on the Boolean hidden matching problem. So in this problem, Alice and Bob again, and Alice holds a bit string, which is, in this case, a bunch of zeros and ones. And Bob holds a partition or matching uh, of Alice input. So what he has is this matching. So he has some assignments of how, how to permute Alice bit string, whatever this bit string is. So for example, he has some assignment that the first a uh, bit of Alice uh, string is gonna become the tenth string, the tenth bit, sorry, and the second is gonna become the side, the third, and so on. So Bob doesn't know the value of the bit string, but he, kn he knows how to permute them or how to rearrange. So Alice is gonna send some, it's gonna send the bits to Bob, and Bob is gonna rearrange the bits, for example, in this picture. And then he's gonna uh, uh, group the bits together into uh, blocks. Originally in blocks of two. 
So he's going to rearrange and get, re, uh, focus on the first two bits. So the first and the second is the first block. The third and the fourth is the second block, and so on. And then, given this block, he's going to uh, compress uh, this final string blocks using the function parity. See, so he's going he's gonna to calculate the parity of each block to output a final B string. In this case, one, one, zero, and so on. So, uh, and the interesting in finding uh, properties, properties of this properties. less, uh, this final B string. And uh, which, what property you're looking at, what question you're asking uh, about this final B string is going to define a problem. So in more de mathematical details, I hope the, 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 the figure helps uh, visualizing the, the problem. So in, in more, more mathematical terms, Alice holds a B string X, and Bob holds a alpha matching M with disjoint blocks, uh, which is basically the, 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 the index of, of the, the, uh, the index that they need to be grouped together. So X, if you, if you join, if you consider X and this matching together, you're gonna arrive at the final B string uh, Z, which is basically, if you remember the, the previous picture, is the, the parity of each block. And what is alpha? Alpha is a parameter between zero and one. You might, maybe you're not interested in consider the whole, the whole final string. So you wanna just, uh, interesting uh, in a, in a uh, subset of fraction. Normally uh, alpha, alpha is, uh, is introduced for, for technical problems, uh, uh, technical uh, uh, issues when calculating lower bounds. But yeah, but maybe don't, don't, not interesting in the whole block, the whole final string. Cool. Uh, so one problem you can ask is, uh, given this final string, I want Alice uh, or Bob actually, uh, yeah, to output a block and the corresponding bit of that block. So that's one okay question you can make. This was uh, the original problem is called hidden matching problem. So uh, Bob wanted to output the block and the corresponding bit, and you can see this is a relational problem. So there's many answers to this, uh, many solutions to this problem. And this this can make can, this can be transformed into a into a function, and uh, by the, by the following argument. So it, it, Bob now holds an extra B string, which is the same side of this compressed B string Z, and we promise that this B string Z is either equal to uh, W or is complement. So you can see is a is a partial is a promise. So it's a partial function, it's not a total function. So in this way, is a you can see as an artificial way of making the hidden matching problem into a function. So it's called boolean hidden matching problem. And so why is this problem important? Is because it was the first relational problem and partial boolean function to an exhibit an exponential separation between class and quantum. So I'm, I'm going to talk more about the separation. So it's possible to prove that with log n bits, if you, uh, you can solve the problem. So the basic idea is that Alice can send a supposition of her bits uh, using this, this quantum state. And then Bob, Bob knows uh, which, which bits to group together. So he can, he can use a POVM to measure this, fi this initial state of block and uh, reduce it to the, only the bits that are in some block. So he's gonna, he gonna project the final state, the, 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 state, the early state into one of the block. He's gonna get a random block he, uh, he doesn't control uh, and get this final state here. I don't know if you can see my pointer, but yeah, it's a supposition of two bits. Uh, sorry, two, two states, which represents two bits in the, uh, in the classical bit. And then with these states, Bob can measure in the plus and minus state and infer the parity of 
of the bits of x, x i l and x j l. So if the parity of two bits is zero, he always get plus. If the parity is one, he always get minus. So in this way, they can solve the problem. If they wanna, and, uh, and that's it. So log n bits suffice to solve the problem. Uh, the classical counterpart, you can come up with like a, with a classical communication uh, protocol that is gonna communicate square root of n. So this is due to both the paradox. The best that Alice can do is just send random bits and hope that two of the, those, those bits will clash into the same group. Uh, and then uh, in this paper, Gavinsky, Kane, uh, Kernis, Ras, and the Wolf, they use some free analysis to prove that they, a lower bound on the class communication of square root of n. So you can see there's a, as exponential separation, while uh, the uh, quantum you can send, you can solve the problem with log n qubits, classically you need to send square root of n. So it was an important result back in the day, as I said, was the first separation. Uh, good, so now I'm gonna introduce our generalization of the Boolean hidden matching problem. So, like why parity? Like we, we use parity to compress the function, the, the sorry, compress the B string to a final B string Z. But why parity? Why not any Boolean function F really? So that's what the, the, the main motivation, one of the main motivations uh, for our realization is to use more functions and to uh, find more exponent separations. Uh, we, I don't feel the uh, satisfactor, uh, satisfactory number of separation, exponential separations in the field. Uh, I, there are like a couple of like five, five, six main broad classes. So we, we started this project in hope to find more exponential separations uh, between class and quantum. So what the F. William hidden partition problem is. Again, we have the same situation. Alice has her B string. Bob has a permutation of her B strings. Uh, and now he's gonna group the, his, 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 his bits into like groups of not, to be, generic, to be more general, not two, but any T bits. And he's gonna compress his bits using some uh, fixed Boolean function f to get a final function. So again, we can come up with this, make similar questions. For example, uh, in more mathematical terms, Alice holds uh, holds a bit string x, Bob holds a permutation uh, sigma, e, and then given this Boolean function f and a j block, so this J block is, is literally the, is a mathematical, is a mathematical representation, representation of these uh, blue circles. So I'm gonna permute, given a permutation, I'm gonna divide in the block, like J block with T bits each. So give this block, I apply F, the F function to get this final uh, B string B, B F, okay? Uh, so, this BF is mapping is literally is basically what was uh, depicted in the in the in the, in the image uh, before. So now we can make a similar question, similar make a similar problem. Bob holds a uh, string uh, W, and his problem is that the compressed is find a string is either equal to, to a bit string is either equal to W or its complement. So when we know find which case is the correct one. So the case of parity was still before. So as I, we saw before, for two bits, it was studied by Ronald, the elephant, and the others. It was later generalized in these two papers uh, for parity on T bits. So very new, they, got, they obtained this classical lower bound. So you can see that when T equals two, we, got, we get the usual uh, Boolean hidden matching problem that I mentioned before. 
and chi yu and yu they got a quantum lower bound uh, of the following uh, which is uh, n to 1 minus 2 t is interesting to, to notice that when t equals 2 this lower bound doesn't give anything which is we know why because for t equals 2 we have an efficient uh, quantum protocol cool so we know we know that f for some functions this this problem is hard parity this problem is hard for other functions this this problem is easy for example if you if you consider the function and the it's going to output zero if any of your bits is zero and one if all your bits are one you can see the problem is quite easy alice can can send a single bit zero and solve the problem because it doesn't matter what the other bits in the block are and bob doesn't need to know so for some functions the problem is very hard parity for some functions the problem is very it's very easy like and or, or so what what makes one problem easier than the other well what changes so i'm gonna allow characterize the problem start characterize the problem so we think and i'll put it as a conjecture we think that we can characterize the problem in terms of the sign degree of f so what what what, what is the sign degree of f you ask so given a boolean function from t bits to one bit uh, we say a polynomial p uh, to the reals is signed to represent f if assume a negative values on the is strings whose f values are zero and assumes positive values on the strings whose, va whose f value is one as i'm putting stating here and we say in the sign degree of f which is we denote by s deck is the minimum degree of such f so that's and we think that the problem can totally can be totally characterized by f sorry by the sign degree I, I stay, I put here as a conjecture because we, we didn't fully characterize the problem, only partially. This is going to be clear when we look at the, and, and look at the lower bounds. Okay. Now I'm going to enter in our results, uh, properly. So I'm going to start talking about upper bounds. Uh, any questions so far? I didn't get why was it so easy for the n function? Uh, what does it mean that if Alice, Alice cannot choose her input? I mean, for example, look look here in this figure. For example, Alice, he, she looks at her bits, her bit string, and she sees a zero. So, for example, the second bit is zero. Mm -hmm. So she sends she sends uh, she sends to Bob like my second bit is zero so it's going to take log n uh, bits to say the position of the bit is zero oh and then it's just okay thanks and then like yeah for example the fourth uh, one he looks yeah okay. it doesn't matter the others so it's very easy for end but okay. preparity is hard good so yeah now upper bounds so we proved the following we proved we came up with a randomized class protocol the communicates log n bits if the sign degree is less or equal to one. By this notation R1, I mean the random, randomized cl classical communication complexity in the one-way module. So yeah, if, if you send basically log n bits, uh, you can solve the problem if the sign degree is less or equal to one. The general idea of the protocol is the, if you let P, B the sign represented polynomial of f taking this form with this coefficients alpha zero and alpha i to t what Alice does she just sends uh, different bits uniformly random to bob given these bits bob defined this random variable so he, he gonna take the bits of the the Alice sends and he gonna uh see uh he, he's gonna try to construct the the sign represented polynomial of f he's gonna so he's gonna 
uh, try to reconstruct this polynomial P. So it takes the bit string, uh, the bits that I understand, and associates the corresponding uh, coefficient of the side represented polynomial uh, uh, to two x. So we can we, we can prove that the ex the expectation value of this uh, random variable is positive. If the find if the compressed B string is equal to the promise to the B string uh, omega uh, W, and is negative if the the complement. So if you repeat this many times, you you can get a, a good confidence of, uh, uh, of what what the, what the case is, and you can use some Chernoff bounds. Uh, and that's where the, the 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 factor here, this T over alpha. alpha Square comes from. Good. So that's the gen very uh, uh, general idea of the, the protocol. Cool. Now I'm going to talk about a quantum overbound. So we have a very similar result, but instead of sine degree two, we have a sine, de so, so sine degree one, we have sine degree two. So we have a, an efficient quantum protocol if the sign degree is less or equal to two, with the same uh, uh, similar complexity. The idea of the protocol, uh, we use this block multilinear polynomial from uh, paper from Scott Harrison and, and others. A block multilinear a polynomial is a, pol a, a, is a polynomial that you can divide your beast, your beast ring into blocks and each monomial of your polynomial contains exactly <coughs> one uh, bit from each block. To be more specific, if you take a block multilinear polynomial of degree two, you can divide its uh, inputs into two blocks. So for example, the X blocks uh, and the T and then the, and the Y block. And each monomial here, it has exactly one bit X and one bit Y. So this is the, the two uh, uh, block multilinear polynomial degree, degree, uh, degree two. So we use we la, we we use this idea of block multilinear uh, polynomial because of the following results uh, from from Scott Harrison. So if the sign degree of f is two or less, there exists a block multilinear uh, polynomial p the sign represents f. So which means assume uh, you assume positive values on the strings that f is one and negative strings as zero. Good. Uh, given this, the general idea of the protocol is the following. So Alice is going to send this quantum state. So you can see the first part is very similar to the original one uh, from the bully hidden matching problem. Uh, the second part here is the technicality to make the, some of the results from the, from the Arison paper to work. Uh, so Alice is going to send a state. Bob's going to do the same. He's going to project the state on one of the block he has. And he's going to get the final uh, psi j uh, uh, block. Uh, sorry, state. Uh, corresponding to one of this block. So Bob attaches one up a plus state to his state. Uh, um, side B. So now we use the following result again from the Scott Harrison paper uh, that if, if, if you let A be the matrix of a phi, so if you don't remember, A is this matrix that characterizes the block multilinear polynomial. Uh, if, if, if you let A be this matrix, there, there exists a unitary that you, uh, when applying to this uh, state, to any state, in this case, psi j, it, 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 it applies the matrix A on it and some extra adjunct, uh, which is ortho, uh, orthogonal, orthogonal. So we're gonna use this uh, result in the following. So Bob, given the state uh, plus uh, psi j, he applied a, a control U, uh, U being this unitary here, uh, that applies matrix A onto the state, and he gets his final state uh, as his position uh, 
z psi and one uh, u applied psi. And then Bob performs the Hadamard gate on, um, on the plus state, so the first uh, qubit, and measures it. So I claim the, uh, the probability of measure one, so is given by this, so this is the usual expression, uh, yeah, sandwiched between uh, u, uh, the expectation value of u, of this unitary. And you can prove the following. So uh, maybe if you stare it long enough, you see that uh, this is true. Uh, so if you consider, if you if you remember the, the what u makes, uh, what u or the the action of u on the psi uh, psi state. So when we we sandwich with uh, on a psi, the second term here vanish, and we get a expectation of the matrix A. And this is going to give you, uh, given this state, it's going to give exactly the uh, block, block uh, uh, multilinear polynomial on the uh, permuted state. Uh, but uh, uh, P tilt is sign represents F, which means that if, echoes, if F equals one, this value here is greater than zero. So the probability of measure one is greater than half. If F equals zero, the, the value here is negative. So the probability is uh, less than one of measure one. Oh, sorry, the probability of measure one is less than half. So the probability of measure zero is greater than half. So by measuring it, if you get one, probably your F equals uh, one. If, if you get zero, probably the F equals uh, zero. You can repeat this many times to uh, improve your success probability. So that's the main idea. And you, you in the, the, the state that I send is log n a bit. And this way you get the complexity. Good. So that's the idea of the quantum protocol. Now I'm going to move on to lower bounds. We have two lower bounds, two uh, kinds of lower bounds. So the first classical lower bound is for symmetric function. So we prove the following. We prove that if f is a symmetric function, Boolean function, and by symmetric, I mean a function that only depends on the Hermine uh, weight of, of, of the, the, the string. So the number of ones uh, it has. So if f is a symmetric Boolean function, if sine degree greater or equal than two, and f is not the not our equal function, then the complexity of our problem is square root of n, or at least the square root of n. So, and uh, I'm going to talk more about why this uh, we cannot have this not our equal function. So, it's one of the exception of in, in our argument. The not not our equal function is defined by one if this the the Hamming weight of your B string is zero T. So if your, your string is all zero or all ones, and is zero otherwise. So, and this bound, uh, we obtain through a reduction from the original Boolean hidden matching problem. So I guess from here, you can already see we get uh, a class of separate of, of functions that allow a, a separation between classical and quantum. So any, any symmetric Boolean function whose sine degree equals two is hard, but we just saw here that is easy quantum. So we already get some separations, but uh, I'll talk about this uh, later. So I'm gonna talk about a bit about the reduction, how it works. Yeah, but that's what I just talked. Yeah, despite explanation separate classical separation for sine degree two. So I'm gonna talk a bit about how the reduction reduction is done because I think it's a, it's a simple procedure and uh, quite interesting, which uh, allow us to uh, so solve a seemingly hard problem in a easy way. So imagine Alice and Bob they want to solve the Boolean hidden matching problem. So it's the original one. Uh, Bob wants to permute Alice string and reduce and dividing blocks of two bits and do the uh, do the usual 
compress and compare to his uh, B string uh, y, uh, W. So in order to do so, uh, they're going to transform this instance of the Boolean hidden matching problem into uh, the Boolean hidden partition problem. And the way they can do this is by, uh, the only things that Alice can do is by copying and paddling her bit string with ones and zeros. So what, what Alice is gonna do is she's gonna copy her string, uh, her initial string uh, X into a copies. She's gonna paddle some ones and zeros in like with B and C. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk more about later what, what this A and B values are. Uh, that's what Alice does. What Bob does, he, he gonna increase his permutation accordingly. So this, this, is, uh, this is like a, a prearranged, you can think of uh, a way. So before the protocol, they, they arrange the, they, they, they agree, they, Alice gonna increase, copy her B string by eight, eight, eight times and paddle with uh, this many ones and zeros. So Bob can increase uh, his permutation accordingly, like uh, to, uh, to account for this. So for example, like he knows that he doesn't know what uh, what the like the so Bob, for example consider like the Alice has started with four bits, and uh, it was agreed that she's gonna paddle another put another string one for example, or copy her, uh, her first bit into her second bit, meaning that she's gonna increase her bits from four to five. Bob doesn't know what the, the second uh, bit is, but he knows that it is the same as the, the first one. So he can put the, 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 the strings together. He's gonna increase his permutation in a way that the, uh, the, 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 the new strings are added in the in 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 uh, same way. So, I try to be, I, maybe this picture is, is gonna clarify. So the idea is that they, could, they want to uh, expand the box or they have. So initially, after, uh, uh, after Alice communicates to Bob her B string, Bob has uh, blocks of two bits. But they want to, do, they want to in, increase this, the content of these blocks into some control weight. So for example, Bob wants to, whatever the content of the first block he is, he wants to copy uh, these, these bits in a certain amount of ways. So which is the, this red circle here. So for example, this A here, suppose it's three. So I want every content of each block to be copied three times. So instead of one zero, it's gonna be one zero, one zero, one zero. And the extra bits is the padded uh, ones and zeros that Alice puts. And this is gonna be the same for every block. For example, the second block is zero, zero. The final, uh, the final count will be, like, will be six zeros and one, one, zero. Bob doesn't know what the count is. It doesn't, it doesn't know if, like, if the, the first bit is one, zero. But he knows that whatever the, the first bit is, or the second bit is, they're gonna repeat a certain amount of times and some extra constant number of, of zeros and ones are gonna paddle the rest of the block. So wh why are we doing this? We're doing this because we want, we want to make sure that the parity of the initial blocks, the blocks of two bits, so the parity of one and zero, they are equal to the, 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 the function of this uh, enhanced uh, block. In other words, I want to map parity into this function f. So what I mean, I want to, I want for for every like x prime, which is a a, a, a two bit string, I want to find another x with well now t bits, such so that the parity of the initial uh, x prime is equal to the f of x. And uh, this constraint here, this relation between the Hamming weights between the final initial string is because the only thing that Alice can do is like copy. So 
A, copy here, and pair the addition strings. That's why B. So we want to be able to map. So because if we can do we if we, if we can do this, we can uh, use an efficient protocol for NAF to solve the original boolean hidden matching problem. Can we do this? So this this condition here, this mapping map parity to F, is basically this picture I'm showing here. So I'm going to explain this picture. So if a, a symmetric uh, Boolean uh, function is basically uh, this, uh, like this steps uh, on the in the in the Hamming weight of X. So for example, uh, if the Hamming weight is between zero and a certain value theta one, the function is value zero, and then it changes to one, and then go back to zero, and so on. And this is a general like a graph of a of a symmetric function. So when we say that we want to find for every x prime, we want to find another x such that the both values are equal. What we do, what we want to do is we want to superpose, make make a superposition of the the graph. You can say the the the, the graph of f with the graph of parity. This, this red line is basically the graph of parity. So for example, when, both, when, when x prime is zero, zero, your parity is zero. When your uh, uh, x prime is zero, one, or one, zero, the value of parity is one, and one, one, it goes to zero again. So we wanna find a value of a and b, so it's the, this, uh, the parity, the, this, these lines, they superimpose, they superimpose uh, uh, into the F uh, graph, such a nice way. So Alice and Bob, they, because they know what the, the function F is, they can agree beforehand on what these values A and B are. And it's gonna depend on the function they wanna solve. Uh, and then, so with this, if this can be done, if this supposition can be made, it means that any, any instant instance of the Boolean hidden matching problem can be mapped to an instance of the F Boolean hidden partition problem. So if you assume that, uh, oh, so let's suppose that there is an efficient classical protocol for the Boolean hidden partition problem. This will mean that we can solve the Boolean hidden partition problem, the original problem efficiently. But we know it is not true because we know there's a lower bound of square root of n on the original problem. So this reduction allows us to say that this new problem that we this, the new problem we tried to solve is as hard as the original problem, as the Boolean match problem. So we get that's where we get this uh, uh, lower bound from. Now one thing you might be asking is like, can we make this? Can we always uh, make this work? Make this map from parity to f to to work can we always find a uh, value of a and b and the case and the answer is no there's one exception and the exception is uh, uh, exactly the not our equal function on a not number of bits so here uh, depicting the the graph of not our equal function so it's zero when the Hamming weight is zero and t and one otherwise so with this graph, I guess it's very clear why the, the research reduction won't work. So uh, the value of B here is zero, if you compare it to the previous picture, is zero. And the value of A needs to be such that 2A equals T. But T, if T is odd, this doesn't work. You cannot find such, a, such values of A and B such that this math works. So that's the only, the only exception to the, our lower bound, unfortunately. Good. So this was a very specific bound for, 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 for symmetric function. We obtain a generic, a more general lower bounds. And these lower bounds, they are partial characterizations and the way that is gonna be clear now. So we characterize the bound in terms of the PU high degree of F. 
So we, ha we say that uh, a function, a Boolean function f has p high degree d if its free coefficients of, of order less than d are zero and half if the, if the for, for the for s equals equals to zero or being like the, the empty set where the free coefficients are stayed here. So applying general tech, uh, uh, generalizing the, the, the uh, previous free analysis techniques from, uh, from the original paper of uh, Gavinsky, Kemp, Karinis, Ras, and Rove, we obtained this bound. So the randomized comp communicate, class communication complexity of our problem is given by n to one minus one over D, where D is the uh, uh, P high degree of the, the function F. So is, if, if, you rem, if you remember the, about, the, about the, 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 the original lower bounds is very, is very much similar. So before we have for parity you have N well over, two, uh, sorry, two one minus one over T. T was the number of bits, but uh, for parity, the, Pure high degree of, of parity is t, so uh, our our lower bound is consistent with parity results, and we similarly got a similar result for the uh, quantum uh, communication complexity, where the exponent here is two uh, over d instead of one over d. Again, d is the pure high degree. And for those who are familiar, the the, the techniques we use is the KKL and hypercontractivity inequalities which are famous inequalities for, for bounding the uh, noisy versions of, of, a, boole of a Boolean function uh, when, you when you compare different uh, norm, uh, uh, norm values, norm, different norms. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna into, get into details into, into the, 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 why the, 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 the proof, the proof is quite technical. So if you're interested, have a look at the paper. So what interesting to mention is that it is known that the pure high degree is always less or equal to the same degree. So what is happening here is that we, that, 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 that's the origin of our partial characterization. There are some functions with say, p high, uh, sine degree three, four, five, but p high degree one and two, such that these lower bounds, they don't apply to them because they have low p high degree. But our, our upper bounds also don't apply, don't apply because they have a, high, a very high sign degree. So there's some gray areas where our results don't we don't have we don't have efficient upper bound uh, efficient protocols, but we don't know if they are hard because our our bound doesn't uh, doesn't reach them. So with this, oh, I'm going to conclude the talk. So we 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 uh, generalize the Boolean match match problem into a very broad scope right, by uh, 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 changing uh, the, the, the function the, the function parity to another generic function f. We gave uh, very uh, efficient protocols uh, for it. So we gave a classical and quantum lower bounds in, stay in terms of its sign degree of, of the function f. We gave uh, a bound on, uh, for symmetric functions uh, with, by using a reduction from the original problem. And we obtain some lower bounds for in terms of the p high degree of f. So in this way, we obtain a large family of exponential quantum classical separation. So any 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 uh, function that has like p high degree like two, we immediately have a separation uh, between cl classical and quantum. So of course we conjecture that our uh, general lower bounds they still hold for sine degree if you, if you change if you change the p high degree for uh, for sine degree we still think they are true. One thing that I didn't mention that uh, we proved in the in the paper is that 
uh, in order to prove make prove these results, you have to use a non-uniform hard distribution on inputs. So normally, how this lower bounds technique work? You use Yao's principle, and you you change the randomness of the your protocol to the randomness on inputs, and it works all solely on the deterministic protocols. So, and you want to find a higher distribution on the inputs that's going to give a, a meaningful, a, a good enough lower bound. In order to get this uh, protocol, this lower, lower bound in terms of sign degree, you have to use a uh, non-uniform higher distribution. In other words, what we prove is that if you, if you assume the uniform distribution of Alice and Bob's, uh, we can prove that under this condition, if if the sign degree, the, sorry, the pure high degree of f is, is less than the one, there are efficient classical protocols for such problem. So you had some ideas on how to generalize the the, 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 the proofs to include known in the form of distributions, but we couldn't make we couldn't make the results uh, go through. Some inequalities uh, didn't didn't work. So with this, I I would like to thank and. Uh, uh, if you have any question. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, are there any, any questions from the audience? Can I ask, could you give an example with high sign degree and uh, low uh, e high degree? So sign degree, in any, any, any uh, for example, in this case, for example, it's, it's very easy to see for symmetric functions. For no symmetric functions, it's a bit, it's a bit tricky, and uh, it's actually, so it's, a, it's, some, it's, a, it's actually a, a problem of, of finding the sign degree of a, of a non-symmetric function. But for symmetric function, the, symmetric, the, the sign degree of symmetric function is the number of ups and downs mm -hmm. that it has. So if, if it goes uh, like up and down, like up once and down, uh, down another, another uh, time, it has sign degree two. So in this case, I have like sign degree one, two, three, four, five, six, if the continuum is constant. So yeah. any, yeah, you can see that any, any function that has like a, a bump go up and down once is a, we have a separation there. No. Mm, because how do you read it? This is the PI degree. So I still don't see the separation. So. The, no, sorry. no, well, it, yeah, no, sorry. In the separation, I'm, I'm using the, 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 the bound for the symmetric functions. A pure, a, a pure, for the pure high degree, first, uh, the, the second condition here, it means that the, the function needs to be balanced. So the final, the number of inputs, uh, I balance, like the number of inputs on F, a number of strings that F is zero is equal to the number of strings that F is one. Yeah, I see that, yeah, because that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I still don't see an example. This is low and the other is high, but yeah, no. For for for, for symmetric functions, uh, I mean, we can always uh, 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 parity is a is a well a sim very simple example. The the uh, parity has sine degree. Uh, a parity on, on t bits has sine degree t. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, and the other one is is very clear. But I mean, if you, if you want another a specific example uh, for pure degree, I, I I don't remember any of on top of, from the top of my head. It's a case of uh, you, you try to vary uh, like you can we can kind of try to craft such such functions. Mm -hmm. So you, you start to write the, the full expansion in, like, get rid of all the lower terms. So the, the monomials with like degree zero and one, and there you, you get a separation. Yes, I don't see any, any uh, reaction from, from anybody else, so. Great, everyone understood fully. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, that's what we all hope. <laughs> thank you again for, for uh, giving this, this nice presentation. Yeah, thank you, Mike, for the invitation. <laughs>